Good morning and welcome to another edition of Coffee with a Coach presented by ECAC Hockey. My name is Nick Strabinski and proud to be joined today by the head coach of the Harvard men's ice hockey team, Ted Donato. Coach, thanks for jumping on. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So you guys are off to a great start this year. 7-0 and in the league, or 7-0 and overall. Haven't given up more than two goals in a game. Everybody talked about your offense and your power play and those high flyers coming in. How important has it been for you on the backside to be able to play really good defense and start from there out? I, I think it's really important. I think, uh, you know, we, we want to try to play fast, and that's uh, not only offensively but defensively. So uh, whether that means, you know, having a good gap with our defensemen or having our forwards really uh, work back hard to turn some pucks over, um, you know, I, I think our D uh, defensive core – uh, not only has some, some good size, but they, they can really get around the ice and uh, definitely a strength that starts obviously with your goaltender defensively. But, uh, you know, I think in general, we've done a pretty good job um, defensively. We've had some some lapses where we've uh, given up some, you know, uh, easy outnumbered rushes, but uh, that's a, a little bit of work in progress. And have you had to teach some of the young skilled forwards coming in? Here's how our system, I mean, obviously teach system, but how to play defense and we got to focus here first, or has it been a culture thing where they come in and this is how we do it? Yeah, I think a little bit of both. I think uh, certainly there's a, a level of teaching and sometimes you're teaching guys, uh, you know, because they're all summer long they're you know, they're, they're playing offense and, you know, doing skills work. So the, you know, some of the details and the, the hard work that, you know, that is necessary to play defense, you know, gets, uh, you know, put in the back seat with uh, the skill development, but um, but you know, I, I think uh, we we do a, jo a good job. I think uh, with our coaching staff trying to you know develop these guys and teach them, but probably more importantly, um, you know, our older guys uh, kind of set the standard, and uh, and and in that way, I think. Uh, And seeing you, you know, your team, you talked about development, and it, you seem to be a team that always gets better as the year goes on. And being to, I think it's seven straight semifinal rounds, at least to Lake Placid. And, you know, always, no matter where you start finishing, where you want to be, we saw that primarily for the best probably outcome you could have imagined last year, coming off the COVID year, missing a full season. You finished 12, four and two at the end of the year, 20 wins, and win the league tournament. What is that kind of a testament to your program and to those older guys, like you said, having those leaders that can come in and say, hey, we missed a year, but let's go and get it done because you had, like you said, when we talked earlier, how many players that, you know, hadn't played a college hockey game? Yeah, I think uh, I think the, the challenge, obviously, for us was, um, you know, multi, multi-layered. Uh, one, we had, I think, 13, 14 guys that hadn't played college hockey, so they were going to, go on the road for the first time they were you know going to see the challenges of being young and uh and playing against uh some older bigger stronger guys uh you know i think we were the youngest team in the entire ncaa last year uh as well um you know you couple that with the fact that um you know i think so, the ivy league uh you know had some pretty strict uh covid you know um you know restrictions in place so you know, I think we end up with, uh, you know, I think 20 players that missed time to due to COVID uh, testing uh, and having COVID. Um, and then and then we had guys that missed uh, time for the Olympics, uh, which was great. Uh, but, you know, which, you know, we do, you know, three weekends without, you know, a couple of your top players uh, is a challenge. And, you know, and, and so for us, I think uh, we did get better throughout the year. Uh, we did grow up as a team. Uh, it was great to see uh, it all come together, you know, towards the end of the year and, and end with an ECAC championship and an Ivy League championship and a, uh, an opportunity to, to go back to the NCAA tournament. Uh, and, and the great part about that is that, you know, that just kind of wet our whistle, so to speak, for uh, some of our guys got that taste of success and, you know, really dug in this summer and said, all right, well, we want to take that next step and what do we need to do to get ourselves back to the, that opportunity. So uh, nice to see us off to a good start, but uh, we realized that, you know, the, 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 the good teams, the teams that survive at the end, uh, 
you know, improve throughout the year. And you're someone who from experience knows, you know, how to succeed at the end of the year player at Harvard graduated 91, won the NCAA championship there progressed into, you know, your career in the NHL, which we'll get to, but then becoming the coach at Harvard, which I know is something that, you know, means a lot to you. The sixth coach since 1950, which literally every time I read it, it's still, I still don't believe it. I mean, six coaches in that amount of time is incredible, especially in what the recent climate, you know, uh, is of coaching. Um, I I know that it's not something you take for granted. What does that mean to you to be in that role and and be there for that long? Well, obviously Harvard's a very special place for me. Uh, Having, uh, you know, uh, graduated here, um, having, uh, my kids now, two of them graduated from here. I think, uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to uh, to not only be here, but really believe in in the the message that the university has. Um, I get to work with great kids, great student athletes, um, and uh, you know, really high character kids. Um, you know, it's a little intimidating knowing that there's only been so many coaches here over over so many years, but. Uh, but it's it's a special place. It's a great combination of uh, high end academics and you know and and really um, you know athletic excellence as well. So that's a, a really uh, and and one that our guys uh, are excited to take on that challenge. And so uh, you know it's uh, it's it's a special place. And you mentioned you know you played there. Your your two of your kids went there. Uh, Ryan obviously playing for you and now into his NHL career. Talk about your NHL experience a little bit. And and I know playing for seven different teams, you know, I've always noticed the, the different guys like Yager and those guys that have had so many jerseys and it's a big story. I haven't heard of the Ted Donato gang going to games in your seven different uniforms, but I think we should start one and we can add a Kraken jersey with Ryan now too. We could have a pretty good collection. What what was your experience like going through the league? Yeah, it was. It, well, first of all, just to just to be able to play in the NHL was a dream come true. Um, you know, at, at my size, it wasn't really uh, you know um, a foregone conclusion that I would get that opportunity someday. So, really neat, really neat to start out with my hometown team. Uh, you know, that I get drafted by the Bruins, and um, you know, it, it's you know I spent almost I think eight eight seasons with the Bruins before we first moved. And then, uh, you know, at the end, I had a real whirlwind year, one year where it was, you know, I think it was like five teams in one year and six in, you know, 15 months, which was like uh, some kind of record at the time. But uh, for the most part, otherwise fairly stable. Um, But, you know, to play in the National Hockey League was a privilege. Uh, I loved every, every city, every opportunity that I got. And, uh, you know, it's it's certainly uh, something that's, you know, very dear to me. And I will have to say, as a numbers guy, I look at your stats and go through and <laughs> four games shy of the 800 number and looking at, you know, four, three assists shy of the 200 with 150 goals as a, as a numbers guy yourself. Has there always been an inkling of, man, I could have knocked out those four more, got three assists, and I would have had that beautiful, nice round number everywhere? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially. Uh, seeing that uh you know towards the end of my career you know there was you know um some times where you know i I didn't start you know one year i didn't start the season on time i played some some games i played my first i think american hockey league game at 34 years old so uh a little bit of reverse uh that way but uh you know you, you like to think over all those years that you know four games uh you know maybe maybe uh, a couple of health, healthy scratches that I could have avoided somehow. Um, but, uh, Hey, every, every game's, uh, you know, uh, in honor and yeah, I, I would have loved to get to 800, but I've, I've had some really neat, um, experiences having a chance to play in the Olympic games, uh, you know, having the chance to play for the Bruins, uh, two different stints. Um, so some really, really, uh, great cities, some great teammates, uh, it's it was it was a heck of a ride and i know one fun story about a teammate is having to be able to play with patrice excuse me patrice bergeron who then ends up playing with your son and making that connection of being a guy i'm sure he didn't love that because he's probably sitting there saying man i'm playing for a long time but to have that kind of story to have this picture 
that we're going to show of your son on the bench with Sergey Samsonov and Joe Thornton. What is hockey and hockey in Boston besides, you know, from Harvard to the Bruins and everything in between meant for your family and for you in this area? Yeah, well, I think uh, obviously we were we were huge sports fans growing up, huge Bruins fans growing up. Uh, so to, to get that opportunity to play was was really special. Uh, then to have Ryan have that opportunity was really cool. Uh, very neat for, you know, to, to not only um, play with uh, Patrice Bergeron on the start of his career, but then have Ryan have the opportunity to play with him. Uh, I, th- I thought that was really cool. Um, also, uh, you know, I, I had the chance to play with Zadino Chara in the, with the Islanders, and then Ryan got a chance to play with him when he was in Boston. Uh, so th- those are, those are pretty cool um, memories. Uh, you know, having Ryan uh, have a chance to get in a picture there with uh, you know Samsonov and Thornton, and then have a chance to play against Joe Thornton, who's you know just a great personality, great guy. Um, you know, pretty pretty neat and pretty special. And one other piece of the Boston hockey tradition, obviously, is the bean pot, which you get to participate in every year. What's your best bean pot story, in ter- whether it's coaching, playing, even going as a fan? I know some people, their best memories are, are going to those games. What is your, I'm sure you get out, get this all the time, but your favorite bean pot story for, you know, as we look forward to that in February? Yeah, you know what? It, mine, mine is pretty simple, I would say. Uh, it, it actually is the very first bean pot I got to play in. Um, just to be able to stand out in the blue line for the national anthem, um, you know, one of four boys, uh, and I can tell you, we played um, bean pot games in both street hockey and you know, and hand hockey in the house, uh, you know, a million times. So uh, to to finally have a chance to represent for my uh, for my brothers and my family, I you know did. You know, I, I, I've been really lucky to play there in a couple of um, state championship games, um, you know, in high school. But to, to be out there for the bean pot, that was uh, that was that was my greatest bean pot memory. Just finally having a chance to to play in one. And we'll shift gears one more time before we bring it back to your current team. But we talk about your some of your accomplishments and your achievements in coaching and as a player and your number one achievement that we haven't talked about is going to the showcase showdown on the price is right. So I need the story. I need to know before everyone leaves this video to go watch that YouTube video. Like I will, I need the story. I need how you got there. I want to know what game you played. I want to know what you bid on. How much do you know? Remember about that and and tell us about it. Well, I I remember it, you know, uh, very well, actually. So, uh, Sophomore year, uh, we had, you know, we made the NCAA tournament. My sophomore year, we we, we won the NCAA tournament. My junior year, uh, we did not make the NCAA tournament. So it was the first spring break we were going to have. Uh, I had broke my collarbone that year, so missed a real good chunk, good part of the, the year in itself. Um, I had a friend uh, who was from California. He rallied us all up. He was turning 21. Uh, so... Um, you know, they basically, uh, you know, his family had, had got him a, a suite in Las Vegas. So that's where the trip was going to start. We started in Las Vegas, uh, made it, made our way back um, through, uh, you know, through L.A., got on the show, uh, you know, used my horrible uh, Boston accent to uh, to stick out and uh, get called up on stage Um I think is the last uh, on the last item up for bid uh, and uh, made it to the showcase showdown. So uh, that, that was, that was uh, pretty cool. Uh, I, I think if you, you watch the show, um, I, I may have got the short end of the stick. Uh, I, I think, I think I should have won the car actually. Uh, <laughs> as, as, as Bob Barker said, you could have drove around the streets of Cambridge in this. So uh, uh you know what? All in all, pretty cool. Uh, you know, time. Uh, I, I think what's kind of neat about it too is uh, we actually the show didn't really air for another like I think two to three weeks. So when we got back to campus, we you know there was eight of us that went, so we we were able to rally a pretty good crew. So uh, let's just say that morning, uh, you know, all our classes weren't full because we were all <laughs> we were all huddled in a in a basement watching on a you know on a big TV you know, watching, uh, you know, 
all of us on the on the Price is Right. I'm sure nobody believes you when they said, "Why'd you miss class this afternoon?" And it was, "Oh, we were watching the Price is Right." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm impressed with how that story started that you remember that many details of it as a 21st birthday party in Vegas. So I have to give you credit for that as well. So as we head back to the Harvard side and back to this group that you have 7-0, and your next opportunity after this weekend off is at Michigan. So bringing it back to a little more you know, of the serious stuff, huge opportunity against a very good non-league team. What does your team need to do to get ready and what kind of an opportunity is it? Well, I think it's a huge opportunity. Uh, these non-league games uh, end up being so important in uh, fairwise and, and and how they you know pick the NCAA tournament. So it, they're important games. It's a great opportunity for our players uh, to go out to Yost Arena and you know play a Big Ten team and in you know a you know historically uh, strong team in Michigan. So uh, excellent opportunity for us um, to represent our league too. I, you know we know that the ECAC. Uh, it's got some great teams, and uh, it gives us an opportunity to to showcase uh, our league as well. Big picture, as you know, to wrap things up. Obviously, last year was your first year back after missing the year for COVID. You get through Lake Placid, win the championship, go to the NCAA tournament. Your goal always being the NCAA tournament and the two ECAC trophies. What is your long term mission? You know, not necessarily your goal. We know what that is, but what is the mission and the mantra this year that's going to push this team forward from? this call right now until, you know, we get to Lake Placid and, and ideally Tampa? Yeah, I, you know what, it, it's, that's a great question. And, and I would actually kind of refer back to kind of what our, our players decided, what their, you know, their mantra would be. And that would be, you know, champion. Daily uh, pursuit. That's not a, uh, you know, that's not a, you know, anything that can, you know, be measured, uh, you know, by the score of a game, but it's a, it's an everyday thing, you know, and, and I think we want to get better as a team. Uh, we want to push each other to be the best we can be. And, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll have some success if we, if we can accomplish that. Awesome. Well, we look forward to watching that happen and watching your team continue to grow. I would say if you can end the year 12, four and two on that run again, you probably put yourself in a pretty good spot. So, Coach Donato, thank you for joining us. Thank you to the viewers and the listeners for joining us. Once again, you can catch Harvard at Michigan twice next weekend, and then they will play three league games before returning home after the new year to continue ECAC play. All ECAC games, as always, on ESPN Plus in the United States and on stretch internet across the world. Thank you for tuning in. Coach, again, thank you so much for your time, and this has been Coffee with a Coach. Thanks a lot, Nick. Great being on with you.